So first, I want to thank the organizer for the invitations, and it's nice to be here in IAS. Um, so today, I want to talk about a version of um, op open Kopaku Movafa invariance, and so we explain how to define an op version of open Gromovitan invariance and how to ex get some integer invariance from there. Um, so, so um, just have a brief review what um, is Kopaku Movafa conjecture. So x is a Calabi L3 fold. And so we can try to count the number of holomorphic curves um, of genus G in relative class A. So this is the Gromov-Witten invariance. Um, of class A, that's a curve class. And for genus G of x, um, so these are some inter interesting, um, interesting numbers. And what I've been told is, like, if we get some interesting numbers, we should put them into generating function. It will be even more interesting. So we put them together. And so what Gopakumavafa says is that once we have the generating function, we should resum it in another way. And Gopakumavafa says that First thing is that um, the most important part is that this number, little nh, are integers. And so usually they're called the BPS numbers. Um, so this is uh, particularly weird because that originally all these numbers are um, rational numbers, and after you you do some weird resummation, they become in, you get some integer invariance. And um, so um, earlier there is some work of Brian under Panda, um, they prove it for um, the local case for local club EL, and I don't know Parker. I'll prove it for general case. Um, and um, but I probably in general we don't really know exactly what this um, integer number mean, um, or especially in algebraic geometry, there's no um, uh, definition of this integer invariance. We just know that from the work of I know Parker, there probably counting of some clusters, elementary clusters, but that's all we know about it. In particular, restrict to genus zero part. Then we'll have the, um, the part which is We'll have the formula like this. So this is just extract from the uh, previous uh, formula by restricting to genus zero part. And then we get the matrical number one over k cubed. Um, so we get some rational numbers here. And then you can solve for some, inter some rational number originally that set such that this equation holds. And then you'll find out that this little n will become integers. And it's weird. And so usually this is known as the multiple color formula for. On the right hand side of the formula, there is a G at the end, but the G is not. Uh, this is Q. Oh, Q. Yeah, sorry for the bad writing. And so this is usually known as a multiple color formula for the holomorphic curves of genus zero. And for the open case, so this is the closed case. So we can also try to count um, 
Riemann surface is with boundary. And so um, there's a work of Katz and Dew. So they can compute the local contribution for um, also for the local case for the local color Yao. And I will now write down the general formula, which seems is, is complicated, but just restrict to genus zero and one boundary component, then we'll get a very similar formula. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's always almost a similar formula like the original one, but it replaced like one over k k cube, uh, one over k cube by one over k square, and with some signs here involved. And so this is like a, we can view this as like an open um, the multiple color formula for holomorphic disks. Uh, star is some some. Some number, it's a little bit com can be complicated. It depends on, I think it depends on the orientation that you start with. Okay. I mean, if the sum is over all k. Yes, yeah, so this is some functions that depends on k. But and also depends on the curve class, like this. Depends on the curve class and depends on the divisible. Uh, so well, can, hmm? can I? I mean, it's a function of, of a homology class and an integer. Yeah. So, what is it? Uh, okay, so it depends on the curve class. I, I can give you like more specific later. Yeah. So, for example, like for. Well, why did you just write it down? Uh, to be honest, uh, it's just like because I I didn't copy down the exact num number for this one. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's just for that example. Just this is just for oh, this just example. For just example. for local. I think that this is, if I remember right, this is probably I think this this number. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's just for that example. Just for for this. But generally, th this can be complicated. I if la for later formula you will see. Okay, so. So our goal today is the following, uh, for, to study this conjecture for this particular following setting. So this is, a ra why is a rational leaf surface? And so this is roughly this um, blow up f nine points of P2. And so if you, you can think about it as like, a rash, um, it depends on its curves, and you brought at nine, nine points of its base point, so it becomes a little vibration. The last blow up at the base point will give you a section. So this has an edit vibration structure with a section. And so, so I'll use the fine notation. So this has a vibration structure to P1. It's pencil of the curves. And so the fiber, if I have a point U in P1, the fiber will call it LU. Um, so because that we know that it's like a blow up of P2 and nine points, so you can use the blow up formula to calculate the anti-canonical uh, anti uh, bundle. And this is nothing but minus a fiber. And so in particular, that means that um, if we look at x equal to the complement, of the fiber at infinity. So anyway, just throw away which fiber you don't like. Then x is the complement, then emits a holomorphic simplified two form. And I'll call it omega. And this is a unique up to C star scaling. So on x. Um, 
So more than that, so high proof that X is actually hyperkähler. So it's not only holomorphic symplectic, but it is also hyperkähler. That means that there is exist um, Ricci flat metric. So this is one one form such that it satisfies the complex monium pi equation. So. Um, so the good thing about this is like um, this pair induced an S2 family of complex structure. And let me write down the um, complex structure on the equator. And I will use this notation. So theta is the coordinate on the equator. And then um, um, this pair that will induce an astral family of complex structure because of this hyperkähler structure. And the upshot is that there is something called hyperkähler rotation. So if x goes to b, it is a vibration. And this is equivalent saying that if I change to the complex structure, if I call the complex, um, the, the surface given by the complex structure and the Kähler form, I'll call it x theta, then this vibration, the same vibration, which is change the complex structure, now become spatial Lagrangian vibration. So in particular, we have Lagrangians, and so we can talk about holomorphic disk with boundary on these Lagrangians. So now we're looking at holomorphic disk, we can look at holomorphic disk with boundary on Lagrangians. Um, and say the boundary class, uh, the disk class is a relative given relative class. Compatified, so we get some. It makes sense to talk about this kind of modular space. We spawn with holomo look at holomorphic disk with boundary on Lagrangians, um, actually spatial Lagrangians. And this, I just w first want to mention that um, this modular space has virtual dimension minus one. So generically, you don't see any holomorphic disk at all. So this is by direct um, dimension counting. Um, so let me introduce a function, uh, cosinter charge. So it's fun. Um, the red, all the relative homology to C. Um, so for each relative class inside, um, we boundary on L, U, and we just map to the integrate integration of 2, 0, 1 on the relative class. And I'll use this notation, z gamma u. And where b0 is the complement, it is the locus of p1 that parametrize smooth fibers. So you can view this as a local system. And so this is a function on the local system. So the first thing is that the um, first observation is that z is a holomorphic function. And if um, the modular space is non empty, then um, we have argument of z gamma u equal to um, theta plus. Uh, minus pi over 2. Yes. X is non compact. What do you mean by the compactization? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so, what I'm going to do is that 
um, Hi has this um, hyperkilometric, and actually this can have this hyperkilometric is con constructed such that it has bounded geometry, and so the holomorphic curve will not go to infinity. So this we still can have Gromov compactness. Yeah. So this is one reason why, uh, in for this particular space, I, I need the spatial Lagrangian condition that so I want to have some properties of Ricci flat uh, from this Ricci flat metric. So it's, I can have bounded geometry curve doesn't go to infinity. So we still have a compact modular space. And so one, th one thing about some properties of this function is that um, the face of this function was has some topological constraint to the exist appearance of holomorphic disk. And more than that, so usually the, the other thing is like this is like the symplectic area. If the modular space is non-empty, then the absolute value is just the uh, um, symplectic area. And the face tells you where you can have this holomorphic disk. So usually, like, if we only, in standard symplectic geometry, we only have this uh, Lagrangian vibration, Lagrangian structure, then we won't be able to see this. Okay. So the one reason to introduce is this is that this will give us an integral structure. Integral fine structure on B naught. Um, so if I have two points, say I fix a reference point U naught, and so up there there's a fiber. Um, so I choose, I look at the, an element of H1, I just do parallel transport, I get a cylinder. So I will say this way, so I'm just integrating, imagine part of holomorph, f volume form of omega theta, integrating over uh, this cylinder. Then this gives and a fine coordinates on V naught. And the observation is that if I have a one parameter family of Lagrangians bounds holomorphic disks. in the class gamma, so in this relative class, and in a same um, um, hyperkiller surface, x theta, then um, phi t falls inside in a phi segment. And the proof is just one line. This is because that if they all bound holomorphic disk inside the relative class, then I just integrate the holomorphic volume form of x theta. And then the imaginary part of that will restrict on the class equal to zero. Because that if you have a holomorphic one cycle, it cannot support holomorphic two zero form. It's just a simple reason. But then you just look at this. And for gamma, you can always write some linear combination of this kind of cycles. So, so this is zero. But this you can decompose into the coordinates like this. So they tell you that this gives you an affine line equation that phi t should satisfy. So this is a simple observation that um, if you, you have some locus that bound holomorphic disk, they should be on phi line. And that's that you get a one-dimensional locus that's sort of reflected by this, like very dimension of modulus space and minus one. Sorry, can you explain that? I was wondering about that before. Uh, which part? So you're doing virtual dimension of minus one. Yeah. So so now we have a two-dimensional base, and so the locus that where holomorphic disk appear is one-dimensional, which is real cold dimension one on the base. Sorry, I always get confused. But are these real dimensions? This all all about real. Yeah. So the base is real dimension two, which is P one. I'm still confused. So when you say virtual dimension minus one, that's uh, over real. Sorry. S 
Yeah. So you can you can view this as like a real version of like North of Lyrius locus. I don't know. If, does that make more sense? That does sort of help, but uh... yeah, probably. I, I can explain like a sort of like a real version of North Lipschitz theory, but probably not. Mm. But I, I can explain it to you later. Can you say again? Yeah. Oh yeah, so so here here this one uh, real quantum one locus, this this a final line is like the the analog of real uh, North Lipschitz divisor. It becomes my like North Lipschitz wall. Oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so I will take for a very local example. Um, I'll call it Ogurivafa space. So this is an elliptic vibration. Um, this over a disk, the central fiber is a nodal curve. And so by this hypercalor rotation, so um, it becomes a special Lagrangian vibration. And as we just explained, there is an affine structure on the base um, that doesn't ex might not extend over the singular points. So since we have a singular point, we can talk about the monodromy of the affine structure. And it's easy to compute the, affine, the monodromy of affine structure. It's actually computed by the picard lipschitz formula, which is conjugate to 1, 1, 0, 1. And so there's an eigenvector. So there's a two lines or two rays emanating from this point, which is very special because their tangents are the monodromy invariant direction, which is the eigenvector. Um, so this two direction not just beca special because of this. This also has some special properties and flow theory. So Chen um, proved that the only torus, only torus fiber about this two rays. So let me call this kind of ray L gamma and L minus gamma. If this class is, if the corresponding this class is gamma. So actually what's happening is that um, for each fiber, you just look at the vanishing cycle. You just union all the vanishing cycle about this line segment that give you a holomorphic disk. And these are all the possible holomorphic disk. And these are the only ones. Um, so there's, I tried to define a kind of open gramo witten invariance earlier to compute about the, the disk. And so I get some numbers like this. It doesn't depend on the Lagrangian boundary constraints. It just depends on um, just depends on um, is the divis dis divisibility of the this class. Can I ask a question? Yes. So I think K three is like an eigenvalue double cover of like the tensor. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It's already a theory of like singular theory worked out for K three. So I think there should be a relation between the numbers you're considering and the corresponding numbers in K3. That's like a paper of Har Harmon, which uh, considers all these things, these integers, uh, and then they compute them as a thing. Who, who you mentioned? Harmonov and two others. Uh, um, and you I can take that uh, ramified, uh, you can take the ramification of the uh -huh. theory you're raising. So yeah, you can do like a double cover event. There should be a relation between these upper stairs and these downstairs. So uh huh. Uh, what you say should be analog of what they have done or something like this. Yeah, it will be interesting to know. 
is there something like that? Maybe I can ask you more about the detail. Yeah. What's uh, you? here is like the, the, p the, the point here. The points, the Lagrangian boundary condition. Yeah, okay, so, so if you compute, compute invariance for O theta, because that actually what's happening is like, if you let theta varies on, along S1, this two rays, like, they will rotate. And every oh, point... This is just for this example. Yeah, just for this example. And then you vary the theta, and then for each U, there will be exactly one complex structure. You see homomorphic disk, and for that complex structure, you compute that it's always the same. And the remark, the reason why this is important, this has some, shed some light about the integer invariance. So if we do this summation, so we do this in calculus class every year, like this, there's a metric formula given by the Taylor expansion of log. And just see this, and this is minus one to the d minus one over d square, let's just give the expansion of log, which is says this is power one, which is an integer. This is like the first uh, 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 coincidence that we see, and this actually match with the slab functions in gross zebra program. So this is first remark. The second remark is that if we just look at this locus, this is the uh, U is the boundary constraints. This look like a tropical thing because this is just a fine line segment. This is like the simplest tropical disk. Because usually when people talk about tropical geometry, there's, they are what? First, they want to have the u they are unions of a fine line or a straight line segments. And they satisfy the balancing condition. Namely, at each vertex, um, they have they, they look at the um, the outgoing um, primitive vector, and you multiply the weight, they sum up to zero. And so this is like the most stupid situation because like um, this is like um, this is for all the ver vertex with higher valency, and this all this this thing only has vertex of uh, valency one. So the second condition is vacuous, and this is a fine line, so it looks like a tropical thing. So this is like the, another, um, I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but it seems that maybe it's something. So um, so let's go back to symplectic geometry. To recall the that for a symplectic manifold, um, and L is a Lagrangian. So FOO, they said that there exists a um, anything structure. Um, on the cohomology of L, which is you get some um, higher product and so once you have this anything structure, so the natural thing to consider is the molar Kalang space. which parameterize the deformation of the um, anything structures. And we quote them by the gauge equivalents.
So um, oh, I just I'm just racing. So recall that earlier we said that the ver the virtual dimension of the Mojo space with, of the holomorphic disk is virtual dimension one. So usually we won't be able to count it directly. And one way that to detect the disk is the follows. So say we choose two points on on the base, and we choose a path, say phi, and then um, for each torus fiber on the path, we'll have an anything structure. And they sort of get an, a cobordism of anything structure, or more specifically, um, pseudo-isotopy of anything structures. And so that will introduce um, isomorphism of Morakadan spaces. And in, under this particular situation, the Morakadan spaces, everything is more, actually Morakadan. And so everything in H1 are the same. And so once you have a cobordism of anything structures, the Morak, the deformation space is net canonical identified. So in particular, that tells us that the edge upper one of the torus fiber is isomorphic to the another torus fiber, which sounds like uh, obvious because like we have the parallel transport to identify them naturally. However, that this is not identity, or the identity up to parallel transport, and actually this, actually this isomorphism record. Um, the information of holomorphic disks with boundary on the torus fiber on the path, um, on this path phi. So if I write the coordinates more explicitly, so if I have elements B, it's called x1, e1 plus x2, e2. So let's say e1, e2 are the bases in H upper one. And so the every element B, I can write it in terms of the, um, um, the span of E1, E2. And then via this map, I'll call it F phi B, 1 E1, press F phi B2 E2. So, so here, here E1, E2 here are the parallel transport of E1, E2 on the left hand side. So I use parallel transport to identify the basis. But then the coefficients here can be a non-trivial map. So um, just for mirror symmetry purpose, it's more natural to consider exponential of xi. And so then we'll get a morphism um, or a transformation. I'll call it um, a tr transformation f phi, it will map um, zi goes to exponential f phi b i, like this. So it, it looks like a, a little bit weird transformation, but it's just like more natural to take if exponential for um, maybe mirror symmetry purpose. So, um, so based on the work of Fukai and Jingwu Tu, so, um, so under the following setting, so if we have an, a fine line, I will call it L gamma, which tells me that this is locus where the Lagrangian torus fiber bound the holomorphic disk in this particular class. And so I have, and that may orient this line in the sense that um, the simplicity area is increasing. So if I go from the right to left, if I orient this way, um, let me call this transformation k gamma. 
then the theorem is that this transformation originally is written in the um, maybe looks like an arbitrary y, but now the transformation will look in a very particular form. And let me explain the notation. So recall that the, this gamma is a relative class, so I can take boundary, so it's in H lower one, and EI are in H upper one, so they can pair together to get a well-defined integer. And so Z partial gamma there, I just define it this way. And so this is like a transformation on, you can view this like a transformation on, on the algebra. Like this. But formally, I should take C, um, replace C by Novikov brain. We can view this as like transformation on this guy. And then, and this particular um, for the log, um, if I take log, I, I will get a power series look like this. And so I would define define this number as the open Gromovich invariance. So this will be my definition of open Gromovich invariance. So usually, like um, in open, usually you will will suffer from like um, take. Um, the the multi space will have this recurring one boundaries and the multiple cover and it will be hard to get rid of this. But um, for under this setting, so we'll get a, a well defined transformation. Once we have this well defined transformation, we will get a power series. We'll just get use this n coefficients of power series we get as the number, as the definition of op open gromov witten invariance. Then we we'll get some numbers. Um, so, Sorry, yeah. I'm really confused. You're not getting these as some intersection theory on some multiple Uh, like this is, you, you, you should compare this one with Calabi Yao case, right? So, for Calabi Yao case, there's no point, there's no constraints, right? So, you're just, just counting the curve, right? Like, you, you, you just integrate the whole fundamental class. Like integrate one on the virtual cycle. Yes, but like that's the definition of those. Things. Yeah, yeah. But these you're defining in the same way. Or? Uh, I'm defined in this particular way, but actually they will behave um, the things that you expected. Actually, this is like sort of earlier. I tried to define the open Gromovich invariance as like um, earlier. I mentioned that there's an S1 family of complex structure. Uh -huh. For each one, uh, the virtual dimension of the modulus space is minus one. You, you, you look at the um, S1 family, you put an S1 family of complex structure on the target space, then the virtual dimension becomes zero. If you do that as you use that one from family as your definition to define open Gromovich invariant, actually that will consent with this. That's the same. Oh, actually, this is part of the theorem. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but this one has better uh, behavior in flow theory. Uh, yes, they're actually the white I define because I'm sort of using that. they actually right now they're in R, unfortunately. But actually at the end they will, luckily they will be in Q, and even these will be integers. Uh, they will be in Q, at the end it will be in Q, and after some transformation they will, in some situation they will be in Z. Okay, so then you still have some sort of multiple cover. Yes, exactly. Okay, so. Um, so the question is, so the question is follows. Can holomorphic disk group together? 
So let's say the following uh, situation. So this is L gamma 2, and this is L gamma 1. They're in these directions. And so when I, when I draw a direction, that means that it's where the holomorphic this area is increasing. And so we always have the question, like at this point, we have holomorphic disk of class gamma 1 and gamma 2, which boundary may be the hit. And the question is, like, may, can they group gr each other? Like, can we have like this? Can they group together? And this can be um, maybe, hopefully, done by green analysis. Um, but usually, we require some transversality. It's usually is pretty hard to, to check the transversality on specific geometry, especially if you put some numbers in front of it. It becomes highly non-transversal due to the multiple cover. And so um, in general, we don't have a way to detect it. Um, so um, one way is about this transformation. This transformation is homotopy invariant. So if phi, if phi is contractible, then f phi is strictly identity. And so originally, this f phi is like have some a lot of like um, is like a power series of Novikov rings. But now that f phi is strictly identity, when the phi, the choice of path is like a homotopy to identity. So we'll just like do a small loop around this point. So, um, so we'll see this, k gamma one. Um, so, so we'll go from here to here. We'll see k gamma one, and then this one will give us k gamma two. And on the other way, we'll see k gamma 1 um, composed. We'll have k gamma 1, k gamma 2 um, inverse. And there may be a lot of things in between all multiply together they got identity. And so there is a locus which is very special. This locus is um, determined by this following equation. So recall that um, z is like the integration of the 2, 0, 4 on the relative class. So definitely like you might have a c, c star scaling of that. But this locus is always remain the same no matter which, which um, omega you choose, because that omega is unique up to C star scaling. Usually it's a, a curve, right? Yeah, it's a curve. And so this is like a, uh, so Z is a holomorphic function. So the argument of Z is a harmonic function. And this is like always, it's always path, say, path through this point, and it always separate this neighborhood into two parts, inside and outside, by maximum principle. And so we just move the terms that in one side of the wall, and the terms the other side of the wall separated on two sides of the equa um, equation. So then you will see something like this. I have no idea what's inside and between, but anyway, we will see something like this. Then the, we'll end up like this. So this term are on one side of wall, and the, though the other, term, the other terms are on the other side of wall. Okay. By wall, you mean this line? Really this red line. Yeah. What if there are terms that lie just on the line? The, the things on the line? Uh, so, because like, so right now, I, I, I use the, the orange loop, mm -hmm. right? So it, it just like, um, so right now that there will be, like there will be no, generally there will be no 
no things like tangent to this this red line. In which sense? Generic it means that. Um, I mean, you don't have a choice of anything. Uh, that's a good point. So let's say because like we have like the there's actually another parameter theta like the the traditional line is like this. this you just perturb a little bit then you generally there will be no nothing like tangent this line, and then, but. Um, and then you just like compose this, and then you can separate the terms into two, two group. And so you can imagine, like say for example, these are coming from um, the singularities, then we'll be able to know if we know the things on one side. So one by induction, or on the energy, like induction on, um, by induction, we know the, the transformation on one side. Then by, um, by algebra, this will be completely determined. By the conservative Sorbonne lemma. E, not necessary. E, it can be many other terms. It can be very. I'll, I'll just take examples. But it can be very a lot of things together. Okay. Yes. And so, so by induction, you need to know like you have several terms, as long as they happens on one side of wall. And induction on, wall. on energy, oh. on the simplicity area. Yep. So. So as long as so actually that like, you don't get the actually you don't get this inequality like all at the same time you definitely like const, um, um, truncate on the energy and then by induction you'll be able to know one side of terms on one side and by algebraic lemma you'll be able to compute all the things on the other side. So this and the upshot is like really we don't be able to do the, this directly, but then. As long as, like, by this algebraic lemma, this is essentially like every k, you can write it in terms of like exponential something in some Lie algebra. And then you will be able to use like a uh, Baker Campbell Hausdorff formula to explain several terms like exponential something, and you can write it in terms of exponential something. If you have several exponential multiplied together, you write it into another exponential, you can solve it term by term. You can determine all the terms on the right hand side, algebraically. And so that, as long as you see some term on the right hand side, that means that you see there will be, there will sh show an existence of holomorphic this on the right hand side. And so, um, Especially like your underlying space, you may maybe you will see some diagram like this. For example, like you see a, there is a direction you see a holomorphic disk. Then you just look at the locus. This look like look like, look like a tropical disk. Um, so topologically, for each ages of tropical disk, we just associate a cylinder, and for each age, um, for each vertex, of, we just associate a cap, uh, a pair of pants, and at each um, endpoints to the singularity, we just attach a cap. Then we'll recover a disk class. So topologically, you see there's a, this is the boundary of whole morphism a boundary of the disk, and then you see topologically you get a disk. So for a, a disk, then we associate a weight. So for each this kind of diagram gamma, I will associate a weight, I'll call it W gamma. So the way we associate it is like for each um, each trivalent vertex will associate the weight given by McCulkin. And for each um, cab like this, then we associate the multiple cover formula we get. And then 
this omega gamma is the multiplication. It was just multiplied all of this such factor together and quotient by um, divided by some um, auto automorphisms. And so the theorem is that that this counting of holomorphic disk is the counting of tropical disk. This is by you just look at all the possible um, tropical disk, and then you sum them with weight, you get a number that will recover this um, holomorphic disk counting. And I'm probably like that when I define this holomorphic disk counting, I do hypercare rotation. So recall that I start with a holomorphic symplectic manifold, I take I choose a choice of hyperkiller metric, and then I get an S1 family of complex structure. I do the flow theory on this part. But then there will be a question is, how, um, how, do, we def um, how do we know that the invariant we get is independent of the choice of omega? But the key point is like the right-hand side here, this tropical geometry only depends on the capital omega. And so this sort of give a, an indirect proof that the invariance we got from flow theory doesn't depend on the original choice of this killer form. And so finally, we can get to the integrality. Uh, so this coming from a very weird story. Um, Sir Gauto Murnaski. So, so they start with Riemann surface, and um, and for each Riemann surface, you, you start with um, some quadratic differential, um, and value over which is parameterized by p one. Um, so once we have this, this gives us the spectral curve, which is um, 2 to 1 cover over C, which is ramified at 0 and pulse of this uh, regional Riemann surfaces. And so if you look at this, this gives a flat metric on C. And so one can look at the, um, the closed geodesic from one zero to the other. If one has that, then on the spectral curve, it become a closed loop. If you see a geodesic like this, such that they were looking at this. Um, so they wanted such that this is a long geodesic. If they see something like this, they will count it as plus one. If Sometimes some close, um, some, some um, geodesic will appear in a family. What is that the uh, wh Which one? The R, R bigger than zero times what? Uh, this is a real array times EI theta. So you just like the, you want to have like this, oh. the square root of a quadrant differential has the same phase along the geodesic. Okay. If you see something like this, you count it a minus two. That, that does not follow from it being a geodesic? Doesn't that follow from being a geodesic? That the, the phase of the differential remains the same? Yeah. So, but uh, I think that they sort of like count that with respect to all, all possible phase. Okay. Yeah. For, because it's also the same thing. Like for each, fa once you, you start with the 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 the, the, uh, the class of this loop, they're they're exactly a fixed phase that can make it. And so they count. So they count. They get the, this number by. If you see then S, 
of one parameter family of things, you, you count it at minus two. And if you see a, a, a discrete one, you just count it at one. You get an integer invariance. What's gamma? Uh, gamma, sorry, gamma is like the H1 of sigma u. Uh, so this are uh, this kind of thing are actually like classified by Strubel. So I think that this part has some. So you have a yes, Q, you. And the complex structure of C is uh, sorry, it's called fixed. C is fixed. C is yeah, fixed. six is fixed. And so usually this kind of thing coming from neuromorphic Hydrin systems, um, but I will not go to that. But on the other hand, so you you consider all such U. You compatify it, you get a sort of, in some cases, you'll get, you, you'll get a little fibration, which is singular. You, you desingleize it. This is a rational surface. So, so this is a lemma that this kind of thing is rational surface. And so. Yes. How is it parameterized? Uh, usually, I can, for example, like um, say, so, so lambda u can be, um, so x is a coordinate on, on, on c, which is p1, like with some constant. So like, say, for example, c1 like this. P1 to start with, right? uh, so in they, they do it for a very general, but to get a real rational surface, usually c will be p1. And this, this U is like there, in this particular example, like this C is P1 and U is parameterized by P1. But in general, U is parameterized by P1, C can be a higher genus curve. But it, it's, it's a linear family of quadratic differentials, um, I think that they, they need to have like very specific family. Yep. I think that in, to get a rational surface, there are seven families. And they're sort of corresponding to like SU to gauge theory. Um, they're very specific families. Um, so I have to choose some very specific U, otherwise it's not true that it's a rational it's a very specific Yeah, I think that you sure want, that it's yeah, probably it's not true to get a rational surface. I don't know. Um, or I should say this way. I, I look at the particle families. I check they are rationally surfaced. This is the thing I can do. Um, so, so for this rational this surface, we do the trend, uh, multiple cover formula. Uh, this is the reason why I said that um, so this this number here are plus minus one. And there are some specific functions. And so you see that there are plus minus one, one over k square that make, make the things work. And so the theorem is that, so this invariance here, this capital omega, and so maybe I will put this GMN as things that is defined by them. So this invariance, For each pair of the homo discounting, after you do a hyper, uh, multiple cover formula, you can always find another pair of class such that they are equal. Since the later one is in Z, they're open in Gromo Witten invariance. After multiple cover formula, they'll be in C. So I will end my talks here.